Hello everyone. So, in a recent demonstration, I demonstrated how you can implement a REST client in Codesys on a PLC, and then be able to send REST requests to a REST API server, and then receive responses using the known uh, CRUD uh, methods. So, after that, a subscriber reached out and said, okay, uh, I followed your uh, demonstration and I'm having trouble uh, connecting to an API server that requires authentication or authorization. So the demonstration I did did not require any authori authorization. I used a simple Flask server and then just sent a few GET and POST requests and everything uh, worked correctly. But then he was having trouble uh, working with an API server that requires authentication. So, in this video, I'm going to show how you can go over that. So, here is my uh, implementation. I implemented my REST client here using a, a library, HTTP client library. I'll leave a link to the, in the description if you want to use that. This is the main function block from the library. I have some inputs here, and then there is a simple logic here that resets. Uh, the operation when ex execution has uh, completed. So the whole implementation is, there is already a video on this. So if you want, you can look it up on this channel still. I won't go much into details, but uh, the inputs are kind of self-explanatory. It's um, execute, it's the content type, it's the request type as well. And then for post data, if you're using post methods, you have to send data to the API. So you can link the pointer to the variable that contains your post information on that input. Here is a simple REST server that I'm using. It's a Flask server. So basically for any uh, get methods or get requests, it just uh, sends back this simple message to the client and uh, response code to 200. Basically, that's it. So this is a, resp a request from the client, just sends back this message, and response code 200. And that's it. Very simple uh, Flask server. There's a, also another implementation on, if you want to work to see how, you can implement a simple REST server, Flask server in Python. You can look it up on this channel as well. So. Also implemented the uh, visualization here to visualize how things are going. There is a URL, uh, there's status buttons, uh, response code, and then content length. And then um, the re response header will be displayed here. And then the response content will be also displayed here. Very simple uh, visualization as well. Nothing complicated, so I can try to demonstrate how this one is working. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you what I'm working with. I'm working with the Turk 300 CDS uh, PLC here from Turk Systems. It's a very special uh, PLC that has a red head for reading RFID tags. I have my application here. I have one program unit. As you can see, I've implemented my REST client in this, um, implemented in uh, Continuous function block, if you're working with uh, function blocks, continuous fun function block comes uh, in handy, works really well with those. So that's what I'm using that. And then I'm having one uh, visualization here, like I've already said, and I'm not using anything else apart from, from those that I've mentioned here. So this is, um, uh, there's an instance of a function block here, of the main function block, the HTTP, HTTP client function block that I'm using. There is the URL or endpoint for the server. There's the start to execute variables here to implement the logic for uh, resetting uh, operations, like I already said. And then this uh, variable will hold the post data that you want to send to the API uh, server. And that's it. So we upload our program. We run our program. And we can go to the visualization here. Uh, the URL is already there by default, and then I can just send simple get request, and then it returns the message from the Flask server as intended. So this is the message that is supposed to be returned with a, any get request. 
and that is what has been returned as you can see here. Response code, content length, header, and then response content. Now, trouble comes, my server here that I'm working with is not, does not require authentication. Now, trouble comes if you're working with a server that requires authentication, right? So let's see how we can go about that. So number one, we shall go back here to our function block. We shall change the response, the request method to post because I'm working with another server that we are gonna test this authentication uh, approach with. So I've changed the uh, request method to post and I have my uh, defined my post data here. As you can see, I've, I've added one action here to help me with that. Um, and this is a simple uh, JSON string. Basically, it has some queries, and then each query has an ID, and then each query has some data here. So this is some uh, tag data, EPC data that I sent to my API server, and then the API server should return for me information related to this tag. So I send it this tag information, then it should, should send me information related to this tag because it's already stored to the, at the API's uh, server end. So very simple uh, post request with this uh, post information, I should be able to get the correct response for this uh, tag. And then, so as you can see, I've attached the uh, data. So basically the input requires the pointer to the post data that you want to send to the, to the server. Now I'm gonna de demonstrate still. So I've changed the server now to another server that requires authentication, but I've not implemented the authentication method or procedure. So I'm gonna show you how uh, it would respond to me without authentication. So I'll change the endpoint here to the resource that I'm trying to access. So it's uh, slash dvvm slash rest slash assets slash find. And then with that, I should be able to send uh, a request to this server. And because I don't have authentication, it should uh, return for me some errors. Basically, I can't access that resource without authentication. So as you can see, response code for 01, and this is some um, HTML content, but the main uh, message here is this unable to authenticate request. Because I don't have authentication, I've not implemented the authentication procedure. So the server, the API server, can't allow me access to that resource if I don't have authentication or authorization. So what do you do in such a scenario? So now, number one, the very first thing you have to know or to get is your authentication details. Username and password. The authentication that I'm gonna demonstrate here is what is called basic authentication. So basic authentication requires you to have the username and password for the API server. So first of all, get your username and get your password as well. That is the first step. And then after that, we shall do what they call base64 encoding. So this username and password must be encoded. And then the result of that encoding is what you call an authentication token. So that is what you're supposed to send along with the rest of the data to the API server. So there are very many websites you can use to uh, do your encoding, but I'm um, using this, uh, this website. So basically what you do is you type the username, colon, semicolon rather, and then password. So username, semicolon, password. And then you encode that. So when you encode, the result is this token you're seeing. So this token contains your username and password. So use any website you feel like, use any encoding method, as long as it's encoding to base64. Now, we come here, there is one input we've not used up to this time. It's called additional headers, as you can see. It's a pointer to a variable containing additional headers. So additional headers, uh, apart from the basic, rest, basic headers that are sent with the rest 
uh, REST message or REST request, you can put additional headers such as authentication, authorization rather, and some other headers uh, as well. So this is what we're going to use to send this message to the server. So first of all, you create a variable here that will contain all your additional headers. So it's a parameter value, parameter value. It's in uh, this, uh, it's a string, w, uh, w string, as you can see. And then what you do is you, first of all, indicate the parameter name is authentication, as you can see here. And then the value is basic, and then space, and then copy this token that you've encoded and then just put it after the basic. So basic space token, and that's it. So it's authentication, rather authorization, I beg your pardon, authorization, basic, and then token, paste in that token there. And then after that, we add an input here and we shall pass the pointer, we shall pass the address to that a variable containing our additional header. So that's, that's all we need to do. So the input requires a pointer to that variable, so that's why we, we're using the address to the variable. And that's it. Now we upload our code again. Now we, we've done the authorization part. We run this. And now we have all our information. We have our post information. We have our yeah, so the post data information. We have our authorization information as well. Now we can, again, put in the correct uh, endpoint here. Uh, this port is 5601 slash, okay, sorry, tvvm slash rest slash assets slash find. And now we send our request and we should be able to get, okay, 200, response is good, content size, and this is the information basically that is related to that uh, tag that we sent to the API server. So previously we couldn't access this information, but now after authorization, after implementing the author authorization step, now we are able to get a valid response from the API server. Very, very simple way this is basic authentication so just a simple recap remember get your username get your password do a base 64 encoding here it will result in a, a token get your token and then in the extra or additional headers in the w string just parameter name is authorization space, uh, authorization, then the value is basic space, and then the token that you've, you've had. And then put that address to that variable on this uh, additional header input, and that's it. So thank you very much.